All right, she is a personal finance educator and consumer advocate with Financial Planning Standards Council. Okay, so she knows what she's talking about here. Her name is uh, Kelly Keen. And good afternoon, Kelly. Good afternoon, Dylan. Wonderful to have you here because, yeah. you know, sometimes there's financial clutter. What does that mean exactly, financial clutter? Right. The, almost everyone has some kind of financial clutter, unless you're like a Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory <laughs> that you love organizing. Most yeah. people report that they don't. They have stacks. They have tax returns. They don't know how long they should keep them for. This is what worries me the most, Dylan, is, um, you know, uh, March was Fraud Prevention Month, and, you know, you might have stuff all over the place. You might have stuff all over the house, not realizing that you have your social insurance number on it. If you have your name, your date of birth on it, these are key pieces of information mm -hmm. that can leave you vulnerable to uh, identity theft, fraudsters. Some people don't know where the kid's passport is or they're carrying, here's one. <laughs> if you're carrying your SIN card yeah. or your uh, birth certificate in your wallet or your purse, take that out. Yeah. That's really important information if that gets lost or stolen. Um, so knowing where all your clutter is, spending a few hours uh, during the spring, to get it organized, figure out what you should do with what, is yeah. just a really good practice. So then what's the first step then? Because obviously like you're talking about a, a pile of things that accumulate yeah. after time, right? Because yes. we really are collectors of junk and we don't throw out things that we should throw out. Where do you start? Well, and that's a good point. Or we throw out stuff that okay. we shouldn't be throwing out. Yeah. And if you've not dealt with a pro like a certified financial planner, you've probably not done this exercise. So I've got some props I'll refer to in a moment here, but there's really three buckets, okay? okay. So the first bucket is what should you toss? And when I say toss, I don't actually mean toss anything mm -hmm. because you need a really good shredder. That's number one. Um, you want to keep six years of your tax returns and any supporting documents. So especially if you're self-employed, you want to keep anything that would support whatever you were writing off, maybe a portion of the house or things of that sort. But after six years, you can shred all of that. Mm. Now, if you're not self-employed, as those bank statements come in, the credit card statements come in, have a look, make sure everything is good, there's nothing fraudulent, put it in the shredder. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's bucket number one. So sorry, so six years for just about everything? Is that like the standard? For your tax returns. Just tax returns. Yeah, but I mean, if it's stuff like receipts or it's, like I said, credit card bills or things of that sort, if you've reviewed it, you don't need it. Yeah. You can actually get rid of it. But here's the caveat, anything, anything with your name and address on it, you absolutely want to shred that. You don't want to just toss it. Dumpster diving is a real thing. People mm -hmm. are actually out there looking for your information, looking in the garbage to see if you've thrown out uh, anything that they can use. That's so something. it's scary, oh. but it is, it's real. Sounds and dirty too. It is. <laughs> Smelly. You yeah, know. and 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 when I first started talking about this years ago, uh. <laughs> um, you know, people challenged. I would be doing this on radio and saying, "No, that's not a thing." And people would call in saying, "Yeah, yeah. I was walking my dog at five o'clock in the morning." Sure enough, someone was going through the garbage just. What if they paper. just mistook? Like maybe it was just Oscar the Grouch, you know? Well, Oscar the Grouch, you don't want him to be a fraudster stealing <laughs> your stuff. I'm stealing day. your stuff, man. Because that can cost you severely. <laughs> We're making light of it. But I don't it mean to get off topic here. No, you know. not at all. So, so you've only mentioned one bucket. One bucket. Number two. The <laughs> second bucket, which I like something like this. I went out to an uh, office supply store. This was under $11. Yeah. I love this. Not just that it's colorful and <laughs> springy, but if you open it up, everything is all thought out for for your second bucket. So that okay. is what do you need to keep? You want to keep important documents like life insurance, uh, mortgage statements, your investment accounts. Now, Dylan, one person, I'm not going to ask you about your situation, but one person usually steps up to the financial plate and usually uh, another person doesn't or maybe uh, some of your viewers are looking up to their you know their parents yeah. finances having everything in one spot knowing where everything is provides a lot of peace of mind in the event of an emergency if someone else has to come in and look after those finances of course uh, this could be a binder it doesn't have to be an accordion file now I travel so I'm gonna get my geek on here but here's uh -huh. my little mini accordion file okay that I take with me all over traveling I open this up I've got like little slots for cash or like to put my receipts and things of that sort I can write down my spending now here's something talk about shredding here is something I did not used to shred mm -hmm. as a traveler is my boarding pass I would just toss it in in the garbage there's like my name there's nothing on here really yeah, yeah. 
But However, this little barcode can be read by fraudsters. They can actually get in. They can go and see where I'm going. They can do pesky things like change my seat or cancel a flight. Uh, but it comes back to like this whole digital life and, and figuring out your life every once in a while, talking mm -hmm. to the kids. So that number one, what should you shred? Number mm -hmm. two is what should you keep? And then the third bucket is, okay, now you might have gone through all these things and realized that there's some holes in your financial life. Like, do you have a will? Have mm. you dusted it off in the last five or 10 years? Mm -hmm. Do you have something like a power of attorney or a living will? Those are really inexpensive documents that uh, if you don't have them in place in the time, again, in the event of an emergency, it really can cause a lot of havoc for a family, so. Okay, so, so I mean, obviously, like this time of year, we're thinking about it, spring cleaning, all this, yeah. so it's a good time to, it's top of mind, right? So, but how long should we be focusing on this? Should we be focusing on it every day or weekly or? What's the best way to stay organized? You know what, like a spring cleaning, this should take you a few hours to really kind of figure it all out. I know it sounds like a lot, but it really shouldn't, most families, about three hours, maybe within a week, yeah. that sh they should be good to go. And then, now, if you've got 20 years tax returns that you've never shredded or things of that sort, you have a lot of shredding, wow. maybe call up your bank and find out who they use for a shredding company and you may want to get, you know, uh, a professional uh, shredding company and maybe some professional help to help you figure out too, what should you throw out, what should you keep. Now, the key part going forward is, how do you stay organized and not get in that situation again? So my husband and I, we have a really rudimentary kind of process. We've got a basket on the table, throw all the bills in there, and for 30 minutes a month, uh, we just sit down, open them all up, check everything out, shred nice. what we don't need, file it up. Kellykeen.com for more details. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a good time in Winnipeg, by the way? Because it looks like you. <laughs> well, I came here, yeah, before Winnipeg. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Was that? Are, are you out of Winnipeg? No, I'm out of actually Alberta. Okay. Yeah. Weird questions to end the segment, right? <laughs> Kelly, thank you very much for Thanks, being yeah. here and teaching us about all this. Coming up, the More Than a Badge campaign. We'll find out more about it next on Daytime.